What is going on everybody? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and today we are going to get into uh, one of my favorite streamers, the Pib streamer. And I call it the, the Pib because as some of you know, I used to live in Arizona where brown trout were the uh, game fish of, of choice and we spent a lot of time pursuing them, especially as the summer winds down, getting into some fall time and all that. And I'll explain more as we go along, but the Pib streamer, spelled P-I-B, stands for Paint It Black. And it also happens to be one of my favorite songs from the Rolling Stones, but that doesn't matter. So in the vise, we've got an SA-254 from A-Rex. This is a size two. For a bead, I've got the Spawn football bead, 7.5 mil in black. And then to seat that and hold it in place, I'm gonna add some weighted wire wraps. And this is non-lead 0.020. And then once you get a few wraps on there, we'll cut that front portion and of course round over that cut edge. And I'll do the same on the back side. And this will let us start thread and secure without breaking thread. At least that's that's the idea. Alright, so let's just slick this guy right in there. And if if you've watched these videos where you're, you're using these beads. To make it sit properly, the bulk of that bead is sticking on the bottom of that shank, which helps keep this hook turned hook point up. All right, so there we go. That's a pretty easy start so far. So, Arizona, we got some red thread here. Sorry, I keep getting distracted on my, my own thoughts, but here's some red thread, 6 aught uni, nothing crazy. Uh, Arizona, we, we spent a lot of time chasing these brown trout with big streamers, little streamers, you know, nymphs, everything. Uh, when it came into the fall, after, after summertime though, those browns would get into position and, and start staging up for uh, the spawn. And at that point, a lot of people are, of course, fishing for them, putting a lot of pressure on them. And a lot of the old timers, you know, li listen to when you, you see some of the old folks on the river or whatever, they got a lot of knowledge. They've been there. They've done it. Check them out. Ask them what's working. And I bet you eventually you'll find somebody that says, you know, if you've tried everything, I bet you haven't thrown a black fly. And sometimes that is just a ticket. A lot of times it's just a ticket. Now this one's got a lot of red in it because I did find that the red seemed to trigger some strikes when an all black streamer would lose its magic but I would tie this in all white all black and then of course this version I hope you'll tie all right so for a tail here we're going to get into some fluorescent red marabou and since this is going to ride hook point up this red will be on the bottom portion and we're going to look at just maybe a hook length here for the tail. So we're going to have a two-toned tail. And this will be the bottom color. So some X wraps just to get positioned. Just so. And there we are. And when you're wondering how far back do you wrap? Well, if you notice, we put our thread wraps onto the shank all the way back to where the flat section ends and begins to curve. And so... If that's where we start, you know, placed our thread, then we're going to have to wrap all the way back to that with this feather to cover up our thread wraps. Now I can trim out all these butt ends here. And then we'll finish tying down. And what we want to achieve is an even underbody. And so you notice there's quite a bit of bulk up where those uh, weighted wire wraps are. And eventually, once we tie in all these materials, we'll create an underbody that matches that. All right, so now for a little flash before we make our marabou sandwich tail. And for some flash, I'm going pretty heavy on the flash here. I've just got some red and black crystal flash mixed. And actually, I'm going to 
come down just a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is fold this over my thread, line up the ends, and then as I bring my thread over, I'll bring that flash right to the shank. And then you can just start wrapping it down. And at this point, before you wrap it all the way back, just split it around that hook point so you get half of the fibers approximately on either side of that and then continue wrapping down to our previous thread wraps like so nothing to it all right so at this point i am going to go ahead and trim this flash and i'm just going to trim it slightly longer and possibly you know a couple little cuts here just so i don't have all the same length but if it does it's okay all right so now we're turning back and now I've got some black marabou and I'm going to put this on as the top of this tail. So now you can start to see the theme of this fly, which is, you know, paint it black. Just whatever you're going to put on there, it, cover it with some black and you'd be surprised. You know, everybody's throwing their favorite flies or whatever. And, um, a lot of time it's it's small bait fish to match small brown trout or rainbow trout and that's great but if everybody else is fishing that and the fishing slows down of course it's time to think a little bit outside the box and that's where something like an all black fly which seems really simple comes into play all right so now same that we did with the flash we'll just split these marabou fibers in half around that hook point be careful you don't jam your thumb or finger in there and at this point make sure your lines look good and if they do then just continue wrapping that sucker down and got a few more wraps to go there we go done and let's get back up to the front trim these guys out and voila Nothing to it. All right. And the nice thing about this fly too is it's not just for brown trout. This works great on rainbows. I've got bass on this. Pretty much if it swims, you, you know, fish, fish the same fly long enough becomes the, the right fly, but this one actually gets eaten pretty quickly. All right. So now from here, let's get into our rib. And for the rib, I've got some red frostbite and you've probably seen me use this once or twice i do like this a little bit better than um, let's say some flash uh, like a, a saltwater flash boo or something like that as a rib um, this fly you know especially the browns they're very toothy and they will shred that stuff pretty quickly so the frostbite is a little stronger um, and it's it's a, a great color too so as far as Holding on to itself, it does a great job of not only withstanding those teeth, but it, it just really accents really nicely. All right, so for this next step, we're going to add in a body. All I'm going to do is dub from the front here all the way to the back and then back again to the front. And for the dub today, we're going to use some spawn semi seal, and this is some bleeding black. How appropriate. I do get excited in this time of year, uh, even here in Washington. Right now, the, the fishing is pretty good um, for, for multiple species, and it's only going to get better here as the weather cools off a little bit. All right, so let's just start now. Let's get some wraps on here. And as far as you know, thickness, how much dub we're going on here, it's, it's kind of up to you. You're going to have to find out if these, the fish you're, you're looking at are, are preferring a really big body. Sometimes they're going to move for a thinner body. So I do like to have, you know, some options in my fly box as far as beefed up streamers and not so beefed up. And as you can see here, I'm not doing touching wraps. I'm just getting some highlights. But one thing here, I do want to bring this frostbite forward, get one wrap behind it and now i'll start making some cleaner wraps as we head back toward that eye just to make i make sure i've got full coverage on this body let's see where we're at here 
So be patient, take your time. I know for whatever reason, uh, especially when we're starting out as fly tires, we think we have to tie flies really quickly. And if, unless you've got a trip in 17 minutes, I, I don't see why you'd, you'd have to think you need to tie it quickly. But if you're struggling, want to get a little better, cleaner, tighter fly, easiest way to do that is just slow down a little bit. All right, so we've got our body tied in. Let's start some of this frostbite and we're going to look for some even spaced wraps here. I'm going to say we're going to end up with about five when it's all said and done. There's three. We got four and there's number five right there. I'm going to flip this over and tie it off right behind that bead. All right. So you can see this is looking pretty juicy already, and we've got a little ways to go before this is complete. So tie off that frostbite, and at this point, we'll get in there with a brush and just gently coax some of those semi-seal fibers out. And this will add a little bit of volume and a little bit of movement to that fly. And you can also just use your bodkin or chew on it if you're really in the mood, whatever it takes, just get some of those fibers to release out. And for the sake of video world time, I guess we can call that pretty good for now. Spread those fibers back a little bit. All right, looking sharp, I like it. And for our next step here, I've got some black X select craft fur and I'm, I'm not going with a big chunk here because there are more elements but what I want to do is have this sit on the fly so that it, it just barely those few fibers reach all the way back to the end of the tail and then I'm going to come in here and just tie that right in behind the head and wrap it back a little ways about the Equivalent as if there were another bead sitting behind the one we actually have and Get it back bring it over and at this point you can cut out these Tag fibers and Just a cute couple stragglers there nothing nothing we can't handle All right this fly is sick, and I love it, and the fish love it, and I hope you love it too. All right, so for our next element, I've just got a little bit of fluorescent red bucktail. And I'm not going to stack these fibers, and as far as how much I'm going to use, I'm going to start, as, as well as you should, with l a little bit more than what I need. And then I will pull from the bottom end to get these loose fibers that may be short or bent or cut or whatever, get them out of the way. So by the time it's all said and done, I'm down to just slightly less than the clump I started with. And all this is, is to break up some of that pattern. Once again, that monotony of all one color, and this will sit inside once we're done. And so right over on top of that craft fur, just a little bit of this bucktail. Like so. Make sure that it stays on top. Evenly spaced on um, both sides of the hook. Like so. And bring those down a little bit. One fiber. Of course, there's always one fiber. All right, and there we go. And much like we did for the craft fur, we will cut the butt ends out of this. Like that. Just tidy up a little bit and then let's finish wrapping down these butt ends here. And there we go. So for a little bit of flash on the top, I'm going to do the same as what we used for inside of the tail. And I'm going to combine, let's say, about seven strands, give or take, of both the, the black and red crystal flash. And combine them, and we're going to add that 
on our dorsal side. All right, same deal. I'm going to just wrap this around the thread, meet the ends up, and hold in my off hand. And once I've done that, simply bringing the thread up, you can see I can move that flash where I want it, and then oh, right there, boom, tie it down. Check your alignment before you, yep, perfect. And try splitting those fibers around the hook point. Nothing to it. All right, one last element here, and this fly is ready to go and fish. One more black marabou, but we're gonna tie this guy in by the tip, and I just want sparse coverage of this black feather, so I don't need the inside or leading edge. I want the trailing edge of fibers for this application. So what do we do with those other ones? Well, just get rid of them. So now I've got a one-sided feather. I will get the top section prepared here. Just a little trim of the top and then cut some of those fibers. And I'll show you what I'm working with here. So this is the little tip section. And again, I'm gonna tie this so that the top or convex side of this feather is facing up and the concave or inside of the feather is facing the hook shank. And by doing so, once we start wrapping this, the trailing or back edge here is just gonna follow us and make a little feathery veil as we wrap forward. And again, since everything inside is color and, and flash and all kinds of goodness and red, uh, we're just gonna paint it black. And once you've got exactly the amount you want on there, go ahead and try to create a clean tie off spot. And it's a little tricky the further down you get on these quills, so keep that in mind. All right, I like that spot right there. One good catch, another one, and three. Let's get five catching wraps, boom. And now pull that feather back a little and sneak one or two in front of that quill before trimming out. Like so. All right. And as you can see, this thing is vicious. I'm gonna go ahead and trim these flash fibers real quickly. And try to stagger them a little bit so I don't have all even ends on my flash. And that looks pretty good. I can live with that. All right, so now everybody's favorite, a little whip finish here. Make sure you create a nice clean thread neck behind that bead, cover up all those materials. And what this will do, since I'm, I've got the red thread here, is this is gonna give us another hot spot and yet one more trigger in this fly, which to me, there's no such thing as too many triggers inside of a fly. And first one done. Let's get another whip finish in there for good measure. Voila, nothing to it, folks. So for the head cement here, I've got some Loon Hardhead Clear, and I'm going to make sure all those thread wraps are definitely covered because I know what's gonna happen to this poor fly. And after you go to this much trouble to tie something that's gonna get eaten, make sure you do what you can to keep it as strong as possible so you can keep fishing without having to switch and tie on another fly just because, oh, I forgot head cement. Pretty easy one to fix. So I like to make sure we, we do what we can. And there we go. And there you have it. This is the PIB streamer, the painted black. 
and I will pop this guy out for you and you can see all that ooey gooey goodness is going to just call to those fish and they can't help but eat it. Pop it back in. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy this fly. Please remember to hit like and subscribe if you did and tie a bunch of them up. Let us see what you're tying and we will see you guys on the water.